Hello, everyone. We're going to give everybody a few more minutes to uh, log on and then we'll get going. Thank you for joining. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Justin Cartwright, and I'm the Director of Government Relations at the New York State Department of State. On behalf of Acting Secretary of State Robert J. Rodriguez, I welcome you to this virtual hearing to discuss the state of real estate solicitations coming from brokers, agents, and real estate speculators taking place in Brooklyn. I am joined tonight by David Mossberg, who is the Program Attorney for the Division of Life Licensing Services, who will be providing who will be providing important information regarding the standards that must be met before a cease and desist zone can be established. Before I turn over the hearing, 
I would like, before I turn the hearing over, I would like to welcome any elected officials and community organizations that have helped us um, spread the word and have attended this hearing. Um, many people have registered to speak tonight. Um, we are going to limit um, those testifying to two minutes. Um, I will call on you when it is your turn to testify and unmute you so you will be able to testify. During your testimony, if you could provide us with a description of the solicitations you've received, that would be helpful to our investigation. Also, those who are testifying, if you have not already submitted an online questionnaire, if you could please submit one so we have your address, that would be helpful as well. After the hearing, anyone wishing to submit evidence can do so by e emailing the, depart uh, the department at Brooklyn Cease and Desist at dos.ny.gov or by mailing the information to the D Department of State at 123 William Street, 20th floor, New York, New York, 10038 to the attention of the Office of General Counsel. Additional information can be submitted through June 30th, 2022. The information will be posted on our website tonight as well. Thank you, and I now turn it over to David Mossberg. Thank you. Um, two months ago, Governor Hochul signed legislation requiring the Department of State to hold a public hearing and conduct investigation to determine if Brooklyn homeowners are being subjected to intense and repeated solicitation from real estate brokers, salespersons, or real estate speculators. If after this investigation, the Secretary of State finds that owners in all or parts of Brooklyn are being subjected to these aggressive real estate tactics, the Secretary may then create one or more cease and desist zones to cover the specified areas. If a zone is established, it will allow homeowners in that area to register their home address, which will be published on a list maintained by the Department of State. Once the address is registered, if that homeowner then receives an unwanted solicitation, the homeowner may file a complaint with the department, which may trigger an enforcement action by the Department of State against the person responsible for sending the solicitation. Under the recent legislation, the department has one year to either establish a cease and desist zone or prepare a report of our findings to the legislature. Therefore, the information you provide tonight through January, sorry, through June 30th, 2022 is vital to the department's investigation and will assist in determining whether homeowners are being subjected to intense and repeated solicitation. As Mr. Cartwright noted, um, many speakers have signed up tonight. So we'll kindly ask you all to limit your speaking time to about two minutes if we can. Thank you, David. So we will begin. Um, Council member Sandy Nurse, you are going to be first. So let me. Your mic is unmuted and you can begin. Okay, great. Hi, good evening. So two minutes. Oof, okay, here we go. Well, thanks so much for hosting this, uh, this hearing. Good evening, everyone. My name is San, uh, Sandy Nurse. I'm the council member for the 37th district that covers the Brooklyn neighborhoods of Bushwick, Cypress Hill, City Line, Brownsville, East New York. And I'm here today to express my unequivocal support for expanding the borders of Community Board 5's existing cease and desist zone to include all areas of CB5, as well as to designate Community Board 4 and all of Brooklyn as a cease and desist zone. I proudly represent Cypress Hills in East New York, two neighborhoods in the only cease and desist zone in New York State. Um, these are neighborhoods that are facing intense speculation and predatory behavior from the real estate industry. And before the cease and, desist zone, cease and desist zone was implemented, Cypress Hills and East New York led Brooklyn in house flipping. In 2016, Community Board 5 saw 246 total house flips. The average price per square foot increased 40%. It started at $187 at the point of resale and went up to 255 per square foot, and that was just in one year. Um, following the announcement of the East New York rezoning, 
uh, real estate pressures amplified. So the average cost for a home in East New York grew 14% in the year after the rezoning was announced, which was nearly as much as in the previous four years. House flipping, real estate speculation, tenant and homeowner harassment, and the lack of meaningful government investment in affordable housing presents an existential crisis for our neighbors. Um, harassment on elders of, of elders in particular is an egregious behavior. Developers have used various tricks to literally steal homes from seniors, and it's disgusting. Before the sea synthesis zone was implemented, residents had virtually no ability to stop the never ending phone calls and the mountain of mailers coming year round. So since the sea synthesis zone has been enacted, we have seen uh, many, many people sign up for this program. I want to thank the community advocates and state Senator Julia Salazar for her work on this. Um, and we just want to uh, fully advocate for this to be extended and that our office uh, with other members are looking forward to drastically expanding access to affordable housing and really investing in non speculative models uh, for homeowners to stay in our communities. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is going to be District Leader Corey Provost. And I will. Your mic is unmuted. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Let's let start my video. Ah, there we go. Uh, good evening. Thank you for this um, opportunity to just speak about this. I think very vital, important issue. I think uh, Council Member Nurse hit the nail really on the head. I don't want to further inundate uh, the members here about with facts and figures, but I think what is often missed in a lot of these uh, hearings and on forums is really just the stories of the individuals that are unfortunately on the um, downside of certain tactics to get them out of their homes. Um, again, my name is Corey Provost and I represent the 58th Assembly District, which are the neighborhoods of East Flatbush, Brownsville and Canarsie. And I can tell you without a doubt, our community has been flooded, just flooded with um, all kinds of tactics against our residents and our neighbors to push them out of their homes. Where on one of the districts that is facing an increased amount of gentrification and we need uh, help. I think that's really the plight that so many of uh, my neighbors uh, are feeling right now. They're feeling just uh, really under the feeling that they need uh, help from the city, need help from the state to push back on the uh, the encroachment on their, their property, the properties that they have worked so tirelessly um, hard for for the years. You know, I live in a predominantly immigrant community, and these are individuals that have come here, worked here, raised their families here, put their blood, sweat, and tears into our community, and are now being con constantly harassed. So we do know that it's provided some a tremendous relief what's happened in East New York. We've seen this happen before in Queens. And what we're constantly left with right now is developments happening throughout my community, putting you know six story buildings next to a single family home, next to another six story building. And it just really does take away and reduce the quality of life to so many of our, our people. Um, I think the final point that I really wanted to underscore here is that we know people want to live in Brooklyn. It's the hottest re um, real estate market in the world. Um, people want to come here. They want to live here. They want to raise their families here. And we are all about welcoming people here. But we also have to, we're seeing such an unprecedented growth in population while not seeing an accompanying growth in um, infrastructure investment. So we're getting more residents. We're seeing uh, people coming here, but we're not getting more bus lines, more transit systems. So I think a good way to help push back on some of that and help is to just let people that don't want to sell their homes, leave them alone. I think that's fundamentally what we're looking for here. Um, people should have the right to not want to be harassed and bombarded by constant uh, tactics, phone calls, letters, knocks on their door, when they really just don't want to sell their home. They want to be left alone. And I think it would be um, well within um, everyone's you know, peace of mind to just leave those individuals alone. Those that do want to sell, they can go so and do so. You know, They can easily find a, a, a real estate agent or someone to 
help them sell their property. But I think fundamentally what we want to see is people to just have the option to be left alone, let them enjoy um, the rest of their lives here in Brooklyn and continue to be um, giving back to our community. Uh, so with that, I thank you all again. Thank you very much. Okay, um, the next person up will be Chairperson Robert Camacho from Community Board Four. How are you? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Let me see if I can get on the video. Happened. Okay. Got it. I think it's the other way. All right. Yeah. Radio stuff. Oh, what happened? It didn't work. Oh, trying to get on there. All right. How are you? Uh, my name is uh, Robert Camacho. I am the chairperson of CB4 in Bushwick, Brooklyn. Uh, I also would like to let you guys know that uh, we have a lot of uh, people that are, are immigrants that live here uh, that don't read and write, uh, like my dad, or, or know the language. And you're melding stuff in there to people's home that they don't even understand. And when you put dollar signs and things uh, in a notice and what you can get and what you can't get and try to force people to sell their home. I lived in Bushwick all my life here. I lived where nobody wanted to be here. Now all of us, everybody wants to come here. We need to stop this and this and you need to send all these letters to everyone and let all these group of developers to stop tricking our people and our seniors and our Latinos and blacks here. We really need to stop this, not now, but right now, because I get tons and tons of them that my home is for sale and my home is not for sale. You see what's going on with this, all this deed fraud and everything that's going on here. All our seniors are losing their homes and two and three family homes. We need to stop this and it needs to be done now. We encourage you and I would like to thank East New York for stepping up to the plate and our elected officials for stepping up to the place and says, we need to stop this. And they need to get more fines and more everything for the, if they continue to send these literatures that your house is for sale. If I want to sell my house, I know what to do. I know where to go. I don't need you to tell me that this is how much my house worth because my house is worth more than what they can give me. I have been here when nobody wants to live here. Now all of a sudden, everybody wants to come here. When the city was giving away the land for a dollar and nobody wanted to buy it because we were crackheads and dope fiends. Now everybody wants to come here. We got to stop that. And you got to stop that with these groups, these developments and all this high rise and stuff. They're taking away our two and three family homes. You see those precious people that died just for their home. Where are they going to live now? What are these developers going to give them now that they're knocking down and selling and, and, and putting these tags on our home? Where are they going to give them a home now? Where? They just, they're putting us all in boxes. We need to stop this. And all these elected officials that are on here need to step up and step up to the plate and say, listen, enough is enough. We need to stop catering to these developments. We need to stop thre them threatening us and putting mailboxes in our mail that our homes are for sale or if you want to buy it. We know where to go and we know who to see. So I want to thank you for giving me the time and please, Let's not be a winky dink board, you guys that are there, and stop putting pressure on them. And let's start saying, yes, we're not going to allow these people to keep doing this to these people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up will be District Leader Sammy Mimar Olivares. Let me just. You should be unmuted. Oh, thank you. Do I need to the camera or no? You you can turn your camera on. Oh, I think I can't. I'm trying. Okay. Okay. One second. Uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Sami Nemir Olivares. 
I am the district leader of Bushwick, uh, Williamsburg and East Williamsburg, a community organizer and resident at Bushwick. And I am here today to stand in full support of establishing uh, a CIS and the CIS zone in all of Brooklyn and expanding the zone already established in Community Board 5, which has been a huge relief uh, to our community and also an empowerment and education process for people to understand what are their rights and what can be possible when it comes to their houses. We have seen our community flooded with predatory tactics from real estate investors and scammers and speculators uh, trying to push uh, people from our home from their homes so that they can flip these buildings and sell them for higher prices. I heard from neighbors that have been constantly physically and emotionally harassed uh, by speculators coming to their doors, calling them or even repeatedly send emails to encourage them to sell in their homes. And this is not acceptable. As Camacho mentioned, we have a lot of uh, immigrant families in North Brooklyn and Brooklyn who have saved up for decades to be able to own and buy a piece of land for their families full of dreams. And these movements left them with, with nothing and most like uh, deceive, deceive, deceitful tactics. So. Um, you know, these speculators have stripped so many families of this opportunity by scamming them for cash at a very low price, um, just for peanuts and literally selling their homes, uh, particularly to seniors and those vulnerable financially. Um, also, this has led to deep theft. Uh, I know particularly a case of an elderly woman with dementia. Uh, and Alzheimer that was literally dragged out of her home by the marshals, by the force in Bushwick after being deceived by real estate developers who deceived her with a very predatory approach. So we need to do more to protect this uh, working class homeowners from this unjust speculation and harassment by establishing this zone in all of Brooklyn. And we need to help to protect homeowners from this dishonest and inhumane practice. Um, we are very fortunate and grateful by the work of advocates, Senator Julia Salazar, Cypress Seals LDC, and East New York uh, CLT and East New York Coalition that had advocated and achieved this historic cease and the sea zone in East New York. And we hope that this serve as a model um, to protect our communities uh, borough-wide and help homeowners to opt in into this and uh, expanding this opportunity with, you know, help uh, our borough to stamp out of this dishonest real estate practices and protecting mo our most vulnerable uh, homeowners to protect our communities from harassment, from displacement, from house flipping and from gentrification. It's the right thing to do for these homeowners and our homes are and communities are not for sale. So I encourage that um you uh, consider expand this to the entire borough thank you thank you okay. next we will have <clears throat> michelle newbauer sorry if i mispronounced your last name yes am i unmuted you're unmuted Great. Uh, good evening, representatives of the New York State Department of State, elected officials, and fellow Brooklynites. My name is Michelle Neugebauer, and I'm the proud executive director of the Cypress Hills Local Development Corporation. We're a not-for-profit community development organization and a settlement house that has proudly served East New York for the past 38 years. We serve 11,000 residents a year. Uh, and we are fully supportive of our great borough becoming designated as a cease and desist zone. We have seen firsthand through our housing counseling and advocacy work, um, the impact of aggressive sales tactics, real estate speculation and house flipping in East New York. We are very fortunate um, that Senator Julia Salazar, the Coalition for Community Advancement, and other neighborhood advocates stepped up to mobilize for the East New York cease and desist zone, but a large part of East New York Community Board 5 was left out of that zone. So all of the homes south of Linden Boulevard and north of Jamaica Avenue still do not have that protection, and we need that protection. We are facing a cliff, a precipice, like we 
have not known before with the foreclosure moratorium ending, we have thousands and thousands of vulnerable homeowners in our community. Homeowners that are senior citizens, homeowners that face financial distress through no fault of their own because of COVID-19 and the economic crisis that has followed. They are facing foreclosure and we know on their backs are going to be aggressive aggressive speculators wanting to buy their homes, buy them cheap, and continuing this cycle of escalating sales prices in our community. The dream of homeownership in Brooklyn is really teetering at this point, and we need the protection of a borough-wide cease and desist zone so we can keep that dream of homeownership alive. We can prevent the displacement of BIPOC, low and moderate income homeowners in neighborhoods like Cypress Hills in East New York and throughout the borough. Um, enough is really enough at this point, and it's a voluntary registry. Brooklynites can decide on their own whether to sign up or not, and um, we will be submitting more documentation about the speculation going on in East New York, but we encourage, we urge the Department of State to follow through on this call to slow down, slow down and reduce the amount of speculation happening in the Brooklyn small homes market. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, we have Alexis Sloan. Alexis. Hi, good evening. My name is Alexis Sloan. I am a Brooklyn resident and I'm an organizer with the Coalition for Community Advancement. The Coalition for Community Advancement is a coalition made up of tenants, homeowners, community-based organizations, and houses of worship here in East New York, Brooklyn, um, that bring together the communities of East New York to advocate for housing and economic equity justice. We confront the historic and racist disinvestment of East New York, and we advocate for private and public investments and policy change. Um, I'm here tonight on behalf of the, the uh, Coalition for Community Advancement to uplift the 500 pieces of testimony that were submitted to the New York Department of State in August of 2020, um, all from local residents um, asking, urging the New York Department of State to extend the zone, uh, the cease and desist zone for all of East New York. Um, I am asking tonight that those 500 pieces of documentation asking for an extension of the zone for all of East New York, north of Jamaica, south of Linden, all the way to uh, Brownsville, um, that that zone be extended to protect homeowners uh, the Black and Latino homeowners in our community that provide affordable rents um, and to uh, uphold the legacy of uh, the Nehemiah homeowner movement that developed affordable housing in Brooklyn. Um, and we must protect the Spring Creek homeowners that are currently not protected in the zone. Um, the 500 pieces of testimony that were uh, submitted last summer um, all documented experiences of predatory, consistent harassment, um, similar to the experiences that have been shared tonight, um, of receiving knocks on the door, uh, receiving constant flyers, um, receiving telephone calls and texts, um, pressing people to sell their homes, and uh, often, you know, bordering on criminal behavior. Um, like with examples of deep theft. Um, back in the summer of 2019, when the Coalition for Community Advancement uh, collected surveys of community residents, uh, over 90% of the surveys collected by residents all detailed very uh, uh, incessant uh, speculation. So we're talking about, um, you know, people uh, that uh, did not feel safe in their homes, um, that felt that they were under constant harassment and barragement of um, real estate agents. Um, so we are asking today uh, that you um, 
recognize the 500 pieces of testimony that were submitted to extend the zone for all of East New York um, and make the cease and desist zone for all of East New York, for all of Brooklyn. Um, and thank you so much for um, this opportunity to testify. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Michael Prieria. You should be unmuted. Hi, good evening. My name is Michael Pereira. I am uh, here to testify in favor of expanding the season six zone for all of Brooklyn. I can say um, firsthand, based on our experience organizing in the neighborhood, that folks who are on fixed income, folks who are under a tremendous amount of stress um, due to and exasperated by the COVID-19 pandemic are uneasy and the harassment has uh, has been has been consistent, has been uh, persistent and is is this is a, a time that that this this win that East New York and the organizers in East New York have been pushing for needs to be expanded for the rest of Brooklyn. I'd share an example um, of our neighbor, Miss Nidia, who is receiving calls after 10 o'clock at night, has folks uh, lingering outside of her home, um, flyers that are left um, consistently and her on her fence outside of her home. Um, it, it, it's too much. The, the amount of stress that that folks who are in economic dire situations um, that you know are sometimes considering uh, taking the decision uh, after being pressed by these solicitors to sell their homes for a lot less than what it's worth and be displaced after building homes and communities in um, in North Brooklyn for decades and raising their kids there um, I'm here to express my full support for the expansion of the cease and desist zone and echo um, what has been stated by the councilwoman. Um, and I'd like to leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be um, Rachel Goodfriend. You should be unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Rachel Goodfriend. I am with Brooklyn Level Up, a nonprofit organization that works primarily in the East Flatbush area. And over um, the past year, we worked with community, Brooklyn Community Board 17, um, 25th Street Block Association, and Center Parker's Office to try to establish a cease and desist zone in the East Flatbush area in the community board 17. Um, we circulated a survey, which is very similar to what the questionnaire, the Department of State is currently circulating. And over a few months, we received 175 survey responses saying that people were being harassed and wished to establish a cease and desist zone in community board 17. So on behalf of Brooklyn Level Up, we um, encourage the establishment of a cease and desist zone for all of Brooklyn. It shouldn't have to be just benefiting one or another neighborhood in Brooklyn. We also, um, Brooklyn Level Up, submitted a letter outlining some of the concerns we have with how the zone would be set up. We want to make sure that if it is set up in Brooklyn, it's such that, um, you know, good actors are not being the only ones penalized because we see that bad actors often find loopholes to policies or they ignore the 
um, punishments or the punishments of certain uh, zones are worth it. So our goal here is to hopefully stop the harassment and make sure that bad actors um, stop once and for all. So we submitted the 175 responses from our community members urging for a cease and desist zone, as well as a letter from Brooklyn Level Up. And we will continue to pass on all of the community input um, that we received. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Next up will be CB17 chairperson um, John Bakarindin. Good evening, Joan Alexander Bakarindin here. Uh, I am the oh. community board 17 chairperson. So I bid good evening to the representatives of the Department of State, elected officials, and concerned neighbors. I am the chairperson of Community Board 17, and I re represent the residents of East Flatbush, Northeast Flatbush, Rugby, Farragut Hyde Park, Remsen Village, Ditmas Village, and Erasmus. In Community Board 17 and in Brooklyn in general, constituents and neighbors have shared horror stories about the aggression of real estate brokers and developers. I have witnessed firsthand the displacement of neighbors and the theft of homes, which ultimately will impact generational wealth. Over the last year, Community Board 17 Land Use Committee partnered with community-based organizations, one of who you, whom you've just heard from, elected officials, committee members to get over 200 plus homeowners in the confines of Community Board 17 to sign on to our petition requesting a cease and desist zone. You've also heard about the survey that was submitted and as a result of this, we have had neighbors and other homeowners in other communities and other neighborhoods signing on because they also believe that we deserve the creation of a cease and desist zone in Brooklyn to help to halt the incessant calls, flyers, letters, palm cards, door hangers, and walk up engagement. I mean, my mom, who's a senior, can, can nary walk outside her door without being approached by someone. We almost every day receive something to our home asking if we're interested in selling our home. So what we do is we request that the, the zone and enforcement of said zone be done equitably and with the consideration of community to prevent the activation of loopholes by bad actors so that when we are safely within this zone, not only can we ex enjoy a specific quality of life, but we can also make sure that as we enforce the cease and desist zone, that, that people are not unduly burdened by the result. So I thank you for listening and I bid you a good evening. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next up will be Paul Schwartz. You're unmuted. I'm on? Yes. Oh, hi. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Sure. My name is Paul Schwartz. I've been a licensed real estate salesperson and broker since 1984, uh, exclusively pretty much selling in Brooklyn. Grew up in East New York, sell in East New York and the areas that have been mentioned in, during this testimony. Um, I've heard testimony from politicos from representing East New York, Bushwick, Cypress Hill, City Line, Brownsville, requesting that the cease and desist be expanded to the entire borough, yet I hear almost nothing from the rest of the borough, which is quite large, needless to say. I find a lot of this grossly exaggerated and I'm sure there are plenty of bad players out there, but for the most part, our industry is good players. As far as these developments, you have to remember that the large developments are approved by New York City. They have nothing to do with the people who are trying to buy them or allegedly taking advantage of people to buy uh, properties cheap. We've been living through an eviction moratorium for almost two years. And there are a lot of tenants who are not paying rent, therefore a lot of landlords who can't afford the mortgage who are ending up with either a short sale or foreclosure situation. And a very large proportion of those flips are from short sales and foreclosure auctions, not necessarily from people quote unquote beaten up on seniors and minorities and such. That does exist, 
and I would like to see that end. But for the most part, our industry is pretty clean and, and pretty upfront about how we do business. Uh, I don't appreciate that the entire industry is being uh, asked to be affected by a few bad apples. We are really very professional and we do a lot of good for the communities. Um, if you look at neighborhoods, I'm a little older than a lot of people who've testified, but you know, Park Slope wasn't always Park Slope. Brighton Beach wasn't always Brighton Beach. Williamsburg, Bed-Stuy, Greenpoint, Red Hook, they've all changed dramatically for the better. I'm talking about um, wealth, generational wealth. All the people who live in all those neighborhoods have seen an extremely high price for their homes to create generational wealth for their family, only because they have lived there, they were homesteaders there, and that is what most of the people want to do with their lives. It happens to be that there are bad apples, but those are the ones we have to target, not the entire borough and not the entire industry. Thank you. Mr. Schwartz, thank you for uh, speaking tonight. Um, we just have a few questions, if uh, it's all right if we ask, um, but you currently uh, live in Brooklyn, is that correct? I, do, I moved out of Brooklyn a few years ago. I was born in Brooklyn and I moved out in 1996, but I practice in Brooklyn. Okay. okay. Um, are you aware of the practice generally of solicitations being sent to homeowners in Brooklyn in the various sure. communities? Sure, it does happen. Okay. Do, do you know approximately um, how many solicitations homeowners could potentially receive uh, on a daily or weekly basis? I have no count on that, and honestly, for the and I've so been involved in probably thousands of sales. I've never had a seller tell me that. Gee, I'm so tired of getting solicitations. We know it happens. I would have to say more from investors than real estate agents and brokers. But again, we agree there are bad actors, but that doesn't mean that the entire industry is bad. All right. Thank you for those additional comments. Just a just a quick follow up, Mr. Schwartz. Do you um, do you send out mailings to um, residents in Brooklyn? On occasion, yes. On a, so it's not a it's not a regular practice. That costs money. <laughs> yeah, understand. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we have Hazel Martinez. Hey everyone. Um, my name is Hazel Martinez and I reside in the East Flatbush section of Brooklyn. I've lived here for more than 50 years. It is common knowledge that our community has been under siege for several years now. These are some of the conditions that our residents face, especially the seniors and those that inherit properties. One, constant telephone calls all day and night, messages left on machines such as, how would you like to be a millionaire or Am I, are you selling? At this point, I no longer answer my landline and I'm considering getting rid of it. It, is, it has even been suggested that some residents consider moving south when people ask them where should they go if they give you their sell your their house Two, the doorbells ringing to inquire about prospective sales they don't even care if it's your sabbath or whatever day it is three we have flyers received in the mail sometimes several in a day and i have submitted a collage of some of them already four we have flyers placed in all doors in the neighborhood we have personal letters in the mail sometimes without letterhead and unable to so you're unable to research the sender six they have placards plastered all over the neighborhood offering all cash deals seven we have developers having someone renting their renting a home to own thereby establishing residency and this facilitates the ability to steal the deed we have a serious problem with deed theft we have developers registering even registering to vote at a senior's home so that they can establish residence that senior had to be had to go to the department the board of elections meeting in manhattan to see if they could get it removed from their home. And one developer even went so far as to take pictures of himself shoveling snow in front of the home that he wished to 
um, force the sale of. And it is my belief that the New York City administration has been has also encouraged some of this attitude because the Flatbush East Flatbush community is comprised of many one and two family homes with low density, which the Department of City Planning feels would have more value if they were demolished and apartment buildings erected. This has opened the floodgate causing increased solicitation and sometimes deals that do not benefit the homeowner. And finally, and I think this, but there are two issues that I have here is that this bill targets licensed brokers and not the real offenders, which are developers and speculators, which cause blight in the community where they demolished buildings that um, they had without a plan. And the final thing I have to say is it concerns me that a public hearing is necessary to implement a state law, which is being enforced in other selected areas of the state. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. And just you said you have submitted um, evidence that you yes, have I, I submitted a photo of a collage of several of these. Um, solicitations and where did you submit that to um your website brooklyn cease and desist at dos.ny.gov okay thank you very much yes next we have um ryan page Good evening. Can you hear me? There you go. Yes. Yes. Good evening, elected officials and uh, fellow Brooklynites. Um, I am a lifelong resident of East Flatbush, uh, Corey Provost uh, community. Um, my family has been subjected to um, an aggressive form of real estate speculation, which I personally refer to as radioactive realty. And what I find particularly reprehensible about it is many of these individuals have chosen this particular time and, and place in history to really ratchet up the intensity of gentrification in the city, especially in Brooklyn. Um, they're using the COVID pandemic in a manner analogous to war profiteers who use the fog of war in order to cynically enrich themselves at the expense of the many. So I find that to be especially morally reprehensible. Um, there are five particular points that uh, of of which the this real estate uh, aggressive real estate speculation has manifested itself. We've talked about flyers placed on homes, people um, walking up to the doors and ringing bells, which I've experienced at my family's home personally. Also, realty offices have begun propping up in East Flatbush like dandelions on a warm summer afternoon. There are three right around the corner from my family's home on Rutland Road between East 51st and 52nd two of which are separated by a mere storefront. And they function as de facto command and control centers from which you can see real estate agents fanning out across the neighborhood like lions um, stalking weak antelope. Um, at, you know, at one point, I said to myself while watching this, I felt like an Aztec watching the conquistador step off the boat, spreading their imperial tentacles across my homeland. And we, and we talk about, as the uh, Community Board 17 leader um, um, expressed, the term generational wealth has become a buzz term recently, um, the past few years, especially in black and brown communities. But we tend to forget that generational wealth is predicated not on stock manipulation or cryptocurrency, not even owning one's own business, it's primarily predicated upon home ownership. Now, it's difficult to pass along that generational wealth when you have very well connected, very influential individuals who are really colluding and conspiring amongst themselves and using their influence with elected officials to rezone and things of that nature, and they have your territory, your home itself, squarely marked in their crosshairs. And I would like to say in closing to uh, Mr. Paul Swartz, the real estate individual, first he talked about the homesteaders. Well, my cousin owns a home in bed on Quincy Street, and someone on social media, and there has been a weaponization of social media for these purposes, he took a picture of her home and disingenuously posted it as if it were for sale, which I can assure you it's not. And she is a homesteader. Her family 
has handed that house down over the course of three generations. And also when he talked about moving out of Brooklyn a few years ago, in 1996, I was 18, I'm now 43. So that also is disingenuous. Thank you for your time and I hope you do expand the cease and desist zone to the entire borough of Brooklyn. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Next up, we have Sarive Lawson. You should be unmuted. Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name's Sarive. I am a pastor that serves the borough of Brooklyn as well as a Brooklyn resident. And I just wanted to give my testimony in full support of expanding the cease and desist zone to include the entire borough of Brooklyn. Um, I currently live in a home that is owned by my family and the amount of solicitations that uh, we receive on a daily basis is overwhelming. Um, not only do we receive emails, but text messages and phone calls at all hours of the night. It is, in a word, invasive. Um, I'm particularly concerned with the type of language that's used, whether they're, at this point, I can't differentiate between their develop, whether they're developers or um, investors or agents because we are just bombarded. But the language that's being used in a lot of these solicitations insinuates that um, that uh, pre that deals were in the making at some point, and they were just and they're just following up on previous conversations. Um, it's very disconcerting considering that my aunt who lived here previously um, did suffer from dementia, and um, I am concerned not only for um, well now myself, but I'm concerned about other elders in the community who might uh, receive these same solicitations. Additionally, in addition to homeowners, I think um, as a pastor, there is an, a, a great deal of undue stress cost to tenants um, who aren't often talked about in these conversations, but tenants suffer a great deal of undue stress because they believe that they at any given point might be um, in need of new housing. And it causes just overall for the entire community uh, an amount of stress that is unnecessary. I believe someone mentioned that, um, you know, this is the greatest borough in the world, in my opinion, um, but one of the hottest real estate markets in the world. And if someone is interested in selling their property, there is no lack of resources available um, in person as well as virtually to find an agent or developer to commence any kind of real estate deal. And so this cease and desist order would um, alleviate a lot of pressure that homeowners and tenants alike feel. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Next up is gonna be Marsha Clark. You're unmuted. Hi, good, good evening. Um, my name is Marcia Clark. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, providing an opportunity to hear from residents on this subject. I am a homeowner. I am a real estate broker. I am a member of the Brooklyn Board of Realtors and also New York State Association of Realtors. Um, a countrywide, a countywide cease and desist in the state's most populated county would, in my opinion, be an extreme and, and definitely a precedent setting measure. Brooklyn has nearly 2.6 million residents um, and it, it's, it's enlightening to hear that um, the opinions of the ones that I'm listening to this evening, which is actually the, the residents in Brooklyn are more than 10% of the state's population. NYSA, New York State Association of Realtors, is unaware of a cease and desist zone that is being established, that is considered to be established in the state, and that covers so many residents. This would cause substantial harm to approximately 11,000 Brooklyn real estate licensees to conduct uh, legitimate business and serve Brooklyn residents as good agents. Many unwanted solicitations come from un unlicensed entities, which we have heard um, described as Developers, investors, scammers, speculators, predators, just folks 
bad actors and offenders. Additional cease and desist zones in Brooklyn will not alter the current practice of these unlicensed entities who, to my knowledge, are hired by investors and speculators to conduct door to door and phone outreach. And even as I've heard this evening, email and text outreach um, based on zip code, neighborhood, or advantageous zoning locations, which has everything to do with the city and how they determine um, a project is going to be going forward. My home in Canarsie, an office on Nelstrand Avenue at Church Avenue, provides proximity to Brownsville, East Flatbush, East New York, Flatbush, Leffert's Gardens, and Prospect Heights. All have seen have seen massive residential churn, while even even while a cease and desist was in existence. However, the city did not adequately provide cease and desist, cease and desist registry knowledge that the community could have utilized to forestall it. It is my understanding the Department of State has the power to address aggressive solicitation by real estate licensees. No, not by unlicensed uh, entities without the imposition of additional cease and desist zones in Brooklyn. Currently, DOS can investigate and fine or suspend or revoke the license of a real estate licensee who is in aggressive solicitation. To close, it is my opinion that the existing cease and desist is adequate, but could be made more visible and aggressively communicate to the community through city outreach accomplished by inserts in water and tax bills, property valuations, HP and DOB notifications, et cetera. And, and in my opinion, this would be the most useful, especially when real property transfers are being filed for new homeowners who then will have the knowledge and ability to opt in or out. Thank you so much for this time to uh, present my point of view, and I hope that it will be considered. Thank you. Next up, we have Harriet um, Robertson. Good evening. I'm Harriet Robertson. I'm the incoming president of the Brooklyn Board of Realtors. I'm a member of NASA and a realtor for over 40 years. I've heard a lot of the things that were said, and I agree that there is an aggressive um, project on Brooklyn, but it's not from the realtors. And with um, Ms. Martinez and with Marcia, I agree. It cannot be blanketed on hardworking people. We have a punishment within the realtor community that they can lose their licenses and people would be able to be educated on that and that would control that from realtors. But we cannot, and I don't see how you can control the aggressive people, the developers. Yes, I've seen exactly what they've talked about, and I'm very, very upset about it. And we and the realtor community try to make sure that we are not the ones that do that. I am not one that does it, and I hope, and it is my prayer, that if there is one that I am able to help you to abscond with that person, and we would move forward. Thank you very much for your time. And please remember that there, it would cause a real headache and actually put people out of business who need to work. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next up, we have um, Barrington Richards.
You should be unmuted. Good afternoon, everyone. Or good evening, I said. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a realtor uh, in Brooklyn. I'm part of Brooklyn Board. And um, I disagree with a lot of things that were said previously. I do agree with my three um, colleagues, which is Paul, Marcia, and Harriet, you know, um, that most realtors, I would say at least 99 point of us are honest and we do the right thing every single day to protect our license. You know, I believe that if anything needs to be done, it should be the state need to figure out how to maneuver or to track what developers do. You know, because from what I'm hearing, it's not it's it particular neighborhoods. It's not it's not Brooklyn wide. We're talking about particular neighborhoods where those properties are, are zoned differently for maybe three to four families or six families that the developers are going after. All right. So of course they're going, they may be going knocking and they're doing whatever they have to do to get those properties. I think something the city needs to put something in place to curb that appetite and stop blaming licensed realtors who are not even doing those things. And I think that, that that's that's the biggest problem. Everything always falls on what the realtor does, but nobody separates the developers from the realtors who really go out and, and, and do their job very easily day to day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, we have Julia Charles. You're unmuted. Julia? Okay. Okay. Um, we'll come back to Julia. Um, Next, we will go to Karen Gray. Good evening. My name is Karen Gray. I'm a homeowner. Are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, yes, we're hearing you. We can hear you. Okay. I'm a homeowner and I'm an associate broker in Brooklyn. This season, the CIS order. I feel has not been properly researched. It will totally damage and kill the real estate profession. We need to pay attention to that because this is a very important profession. The investors will still pull up to the house and knock as they continue to do even in certain season desist zones. I've heard homeowners tell me that and people in various communities. What we need is community education, resources and guidance for our homeowners to be ongoing. They need to have someone to come to when they receive questions and bullying. As a homeowner, I can just say no or yes, or I can put it in the garbage. I have choices and we need to start exercising that. There's no gun to my head or to anybody's head. As a broker, marketing is our lifeblood not bullying someone, that is not part of what we do. And I've seen recent articles where owners are saying they're just waiting for the right offer. So some owners definitely know what's going on in the marketplace. And also many landlords are part of this issue. They're offering to pay the tenants up to 100K or more to get the tenants out. And then they bring in higher paying tenants. So the developers also use people of color as a front to contact homeowners of color. 
So you see, this is a multifold issue. This is just not one way. Marketing is the lifeblood of our business. And if you continue to this season, desist zone to blanket Brooklyn, you're really killing our business. There are better ways. We need to communicate and be strategic. Join your community board homeowners. Join your community board. Participate via Zoom. That is where the decisions are made to rezone and do much of the land use changes. It's important that you do that. Please stop killing off realtors. And also, I'm going to say many politicians are part of this issue. We saw it with the proposed spice factory on, on Franklin Avenue that was going to kill the botanic gardens. We saw that. Please get to your community boards and start standing up as a community. Do not issue blanket regulations that harm others. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, we will have Tyrone McDonald. You are unmuted. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening, the State Department of New York and, and all who are here. My name is Tyrone McDonald, and I'm here on behalf of Neighborhood Housing Services of Brooklyn. Uh, we are a HUD approved community based organization uh, with offices in um, Community Board 17, East Flatbush, and also Canarsie, but we also cover our uh, surrounding neighborhoods. And we too have worked closely with Community Board 17, Brooklyn Level Up, and State Center Parker in terms of getting surveys to homeowners uh, chronicling their experience regarding aggressive solicitation. Now, this year marks our 40th anniversary providing home buyer education, home improvement services, and helping residents save their homes from foreclosure scams and other predatory activity. Uh, homes that residents, mostly African American, Caribbean, and other immigrants, scrape nickels to buy and pour their sweat and grit to maintain. In our 40 years, we saw communities which were once targets of redlining and financial neglect become ground zero for aggressive real estate solicitation, speculation, and in some cases, deed theft, and real estate, real estate prices soared. It's not unusual to see telephone poles in buildings littered with signs saying we pay homes uh, for cash or something similar. We've heard numerous complaints from our clients throughout the years, especially home repair and foreclosure clients who are the most vulnerable of aggressive solicitation, including but not limited to constant phone calls, even numerous personal visits after a, a homeowner had made it clear that the property was not for sale. Even strangers showing up unannounced with briefcases of cash Due to the outcry community, we decided to have a My House is Not for Sale sign, and we actually printed 200 My House is Not for Sale signs to be given to homeowners and placed in front of their windows so solicitors can finally get the message. We distributed um, 50 to, directly to homeowners, mostly to residents in Community Board 17, with some in 16, 5, and 13, and they were all uh, requested. All right, so we didn't push these signs on people. They all requested them. Uh, we also shared signs with many elected officials. So in total, we probably distributed 150 signs, either directly and also um, given to elected officials who also requested them. It is clear that cease and desist zone is needed in Brooklyn since decency and restraint have failed and gone by the wayside. The cease and desist zone is not an implement uh, impediment against business as homeowners will be required to opt in. The cease and desist zone will be another layer of protection to neighborhoods already experiencing cases of deep theft and foreclosure, as it will force actors in real estate to to real estate to uh, um, to control themselves and act in a responsible manner. Thank you for um, the, ha having me the time to testify, and um, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Julia, Charles, you're going to be next, and you should be unmuted. Okay, um, great. 
Oh, good evening. Um, my name is Julia Charles. I'm the founder of the East 25th Street Historic District Initiative. And this initiative was meant to preserve architecture in on East 25th Street, but in addition to um, to nurture the existing community as well as its residents. Um, some of our experiences here on East 25th Street have been dealing with predatory real estate and developers. And so um, I am in full support of Community Boy 17 and the surrounding communities to be declared a cease and desist zone. Um, some of the, the things that we've, we've had was flyers, letters, phone calls, as well as text messages um, agreed and expressed by other community members at all times of the day and night. And, um, you know, definitely, some of the experiences of my neighbors, the senior neighbors, you know, when they're approached by real estate and they're having um, they're having many challenges, this is what we need to do is provide resources. It needs to not be how they can get out of their homes and and oftentimes find issues with um, housing going forward. So, um, in close, I just want to uh, you know thank you guys this evening for this hearing as well as lend my support. For the season of the system. Thank you. Next up will be Jessica Franco. Jessica, you're on mute. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. How many times do I need to say no? My name is Jessica Franco. I am a proud member of the Coalition for Community Advancement. I also, I am a member of my community board. I am joining today in full support of the proposed system assist zone for all of Brooklyn. I am a first generation, first time homeowner here in Brooklyn. My husband and I worked tirelessly in order to be able to afford to save for our down payment. The sad truth, though, is that this opportunity will probably not be granted to our children because property value has ridiculously skyrocketed. Intense real estate solicitation via phone calls, mail, personal visit is not only uncomfortable and unwanted, but frankly, it is harassment. And the clear definition of harassment is aggressive pressure or intimidation. This harassment is causing community displacement. Home flipping doesn't only affect homeowners, but it also affects tenants. Every time a home is flipped, as we all know, property value goes up. And so do property taxes and inevitably forcing rents to also go up. This aggressive real estate solicitation is making Brooklyn completely, completely unaffordable. I don't know of any corner here in Brooklyn where we can find reasonable rent for a one bedroom or a two bedroom apartment that's based on, on what families can afford. I don't know of any home here in Brooklyn that will be considered affordable. Just recently this year, there was a home flipped for 270, there was a home purchase from a senior initially purchased uh, at 270,000. Within six months, it was flipped to 749,000. Within another six months, it was flipped again to 1.5 million. A two family home for 1.5. Frankly, as I said before, we're teaching our kids to go to school and get a career, but at these rates, Wages are not going up, and the truth is that no one can afford to live here in this great city that we all call Brooklyn. I do understand the perspective of realtors, and it is 11,000. It could possibly be 11,000 licensed realtors, but this is about choice, giving homeowners and giving community a choice on whether or not the homeowner wants to sell. If they choose to, they can walk into a realty office and continue on and go about selling their home. But this is also about protecting the 2.5 million Brooklynites that live in Brooklyn. They need protection 
free of harassment. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, we have Ruth um, Sherebin. You're unmuted. Ruth? Ruth, are you there? We can see you, but we can't hear you. Are you there, Ruth? Okay, we'll come back to Ruth. Let's see. Next, we'll go to Trisha Okona. having trouble unmuting. Hold on. Okay, um, Trisha dropped off. So we'll go to Anna Aguilar, Aguilar. You should be unmuted. Anna? Okay. Okay. Um, next we'll go to um, Ann M. Leonard. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I guess, you know, I am a licensed realtor. I do live in Brooklyn. I've been, um, and I do belong to a couple of uh, um, real estate organizations. And, you know, I could say that I'm lis I listen to everybody from both sides because um, my business is in Brooklyn. My business is actually in Brownsville. Uh, and um, I live in Bed-Stuy. And I worked in Bed-Stuy before everybody wanted to come to Bed-Stuy. So I do appreciate everything that that that's being said this evening. However, 
as a licensed realtor, and I do believe and I do take my profession um, in highest regard, I, I think I feel a little offended when we as realtors just get thrown into a mixture that I believe those of us that care about our license, um, you know, I, I'm just I'm just annoyed this evening. I do believe in the cease and desist list. It has always existed, by the way. Where back in the 80s, when we weren't allowed to go into particular neighborhoods, there were cease and desist lists at that point, and we respected them because we understood what the ramifications are. And the investors and the people that can wake up and flip a property, um, you know, they never had any respect for that. And we got blamed. I just feel like it's almost like everybody is blaming all the realtors all the time for, ev for all the nefarious behaviors that's going on in the real estate industry. And I'm respectfully submitting to the group tonight that please consider that there are some of us out here that are licensed, that respect our profession, that only do this as a profession. And we understand that, you know what, at certain points we did make millionaires and we still are making millionaires of homeowners that want to um, transition from being a uh, uh, owning a home, you know, and now understanding what the market value is. And I do believe, and I do agree that they will find us. Um, but I don't agree with the fact that we should have a blanket cease and desist. And if we do end up like that, I would want to submit that we should have some perimeters that we as realtors could work within such as if somebody has put their house on the market already for sale and they did not sell that we would have an opportunity to reach out to them because maybe we can help them i don't agree that we just blanketly solicit everybody because it is expensive to send out paraphernalia and we don't go and knock on doors because there has been a moratorium in position you know, so I believe that we respect the uh, profession that we're in, and I really do believe that as um, licensed realtors, that when a homeowner is ready for somebody to help them do their transition, that they will seek us out and the people that are throwing money at them, because that's basically what they do. And then the homeowner becomes greedy and accepts it. And then they blame realtors for that. We are not all the bad actors. We have some bad actors, yes, but we are not the bad actors. I don't want to take responsibility for that. Thank you for listening to me and giving me an opportunity. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Kathy Mercado. Kathy, you're on mute. Kathy. Kathy, can you hear us? Okay, we'll come back to Kathy. Next, we'll go to um, Jason Johnson. Jason, Hi, good night. Yes, sir. I would just like to say um, <clears throat> it's an honor to be able to speak about everything that's um, been happening in our neighborhoods in this meeting. Okay, let's see if my camera comes on. Awesome. It's an honor to be able to speak about what's happening in our communities. And 
I would like to say, especially coming from uh, a teenager that lives, that's dealing with this too. Uh, <clears throat> this cease and desist, um, it's, to me, it's a good thing because as um, I've been, especially my parents and my grandmother, we've been dealing with it for years. Literally the other day, I actually had to disconnect my landline. They're, they're, um, people are continuing to call our house. We're being um, basically harassed every single day, daily, weekly. It's, it's been happening for years. I had to disconnect my landline. My grandmother, she has to continue to deal with people posting things on her, her door. She keeps getting knocks. She actually went to Jamaica and they're, they're continuing to just plaster her door which I will send a picture of that um, as evidence to show that um, that it's just, it's just continuous harassment. And I would just like to voice my concern that there should be something done. As a 17 year old, there's many other um, kids that can say the same thing and adults, we're all, we're all just tired of it, honestly. But thank you for allowing us to speak and I appreciate what you guys are doing. Have a great night. Thank you, you too. Trisha Okano is back, so we will go to Trisha. For Trisha, you're on mute. Are you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having this. Um, my name is Trisha Okano. I first want to disclose that I am a um, I'm participating as a, a member of the public. Um, as a resident of community board in within community board 17. However, I am a um, appointed board member on the New York State Department of State, but I am not acting in that capacity. I'm acting as a community resident. So I'm here to disclose that first. Okay, I am also a licensed real estate broker and I'm a licensed real estate instructor as well. I am also uh, the founder and president of a, a nonprofit organization, Real Estate Empowerment Coalition. Um, to talk about the cease and desist bill, um, just quickly, we should talk about the history of the cease and desist and how it started um, with blockbusting, a term that any of the real estate professionals who are on the line, they, they are familiar with it, blockbusting, which happened, uh, I believe, um, in the 70s, when uh, a home was sold to a person of color, um, real estate agents aggressively targeted the homeowners to tell them, hurry up and sell before the value comes down, before a black or Hispanic person moves in. And that's where blockbusting started. Uh, the homeowners within those neighborhoods, um, some, um, fight or flight, that's where that, you know, came from. Some, you know, uh, sold their homes out of fear. Blockbusting is a way to have real estate agents sell their, uh, have real estate agents solicit property owners out of fear to sell their homes. So some property owners um, left, but some property owners went to the Department of State and requested a non-solicitation order where the cease and desist bill actually came up. Um, years after that, uh, that was before my time, I became a real estate professional. I became a real estate broker um, and also a homeowner. And I tried many times to put my property on the cease and desist list because I was getting harassed, um, knocking on the doors, um, phone calls and letters. And to my surprise, um, back then there was a cease and desist in, New in Brooklyn but it was only in certain communities, none of those communities being communities of color. Um, I tried many, many years. I, I filled out the form, tried to put my name on there, my house on there so I can stop getting solicitations. And never was I allowed to do that. Come to find out that a law that was created to stop discrimination was actually discriminating. Um, my my community, we were un, unable to where certain communities were able to. Now, if we fast forward to um, 2022, we have the mortgage moratorium where you're going to have thousands of homeowners who unfortunately are going to be facing foreclosure. Real estate investors know that. 
um, and they have already started soliciting. Um, many of my uh, the residents within my my neighborhood on my block are senior citizens. Many people have spoken up. They have dementia, and the investors usually do not come with the best intentions. If you speak to the attorney general's office, even district attorney's office, you see a lot of that. That's where a lot of the fraud, mortgage fraud, real estate fraud comes in. You have people who are not English speaking or people who are immigrants and don't really understand that. Now, as a real estate professional, I can tell you that real estate agents are not the issue. Real estate agents are licensed. We have to follow ethics. We have to follow agencies. We have to give disclosures. We can be com we can have complaints put against us, whereas investors have no jurisdiction um, unless they meet up against the attorney general or the district attorney. And investors are the ones. Investors themselves have told me they are not licensed, so they can do what they want, and they can knock on the door. So we really need to, from my understanding, also the bill had all people soliciting and it was changed to take out all people and only put investors so it really leaves our community open to a lot of fraud another thing i think miss hazel had spoke about a lot of times you get um flyers in the mail and you don't know who that's from well to, to the real estate brokers on the line blind ads we, we, we are barred from doing bar, blind ads. Our ads must have who we are, our agency, our license, whereas investors, they don't have to do that. They only put their phone numbers and they are not held up to the same um, ethics and standards that we have to. So overall, I just wanna say, um, even though the cease and desist bill is a long time going, many, many decades, it has not been here, but the way it stands now, only at real estate agents, it's not going to solve the issue at all. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have uh, Marjorie Jean Jaquez. You're unmuted. Good evening. Um, I work, my parents live in Brooklyn and have for a long, long time as I work in Brooklyn. And oftentimes they are called constantly to the point that they don't answer their phones anymore because they are being harassed by people who wanna buy their house. Um, in Brooklyn, I work for a nonprofit that owns a large building and I constantly get called at work asking people if I want to sell the building. I understand what the real estate brokers are saying about it being targeted to them. But as the last speaker just spoke, it's really important to put protections in place for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Essie Sylvester. You're unmuted. And so, um, so I'll disclose that I actually work for the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, but I'm here because my parents purchased a home in 1975. And I would say within the last couple of years, nonstop calls, nonstop emails, nonstop postcards, I actually had to open up a PO box and I have all my mail sent to a PO box. So if I need to prove proof of uh, address, I have to usually pull out the deed. I have to pull out something else. I can't show any mailing. But it's, and actually for this Christmas, for the first time, I received more Christmas cards from investors and real estate agents than I did in terms of a personal matter. So it's just, a, I, I'm not sure what can be done about it, but I'm just kind of done. At one point, I got a call at work um, and I picked up the phone and before I said anything, uh, the person said, Simone, just name a price. Just let's just have a discussion. Let's look, let's, let's name a price. And I have someone in the home, um, that's elderly and she lives here and we don't get calls at eight o'clock because every call we've gotten at eight o'clock or at, in the evening in terms of history has just been like a call of death or something. Get calls at eight. Um, 
you know, let's start talking, you know, you don't really want to live here. And so just something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. I, I don't need to be sweeping outside and someone approaches me consistently about selling my home. And so I, I'm not sure. I, I think it really should be a cease and desist for uh, real estate agents as well as investors. And so, I mean, I'm, I just thank you. That's I just really that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you. Next is um, Theodora Macris. Macris, your line is unmuted. Hello, Theodora. Hi, I'm so sorry. I was not slated to speak this evening. I never submitted um, testimony. So if you'd like, I'm, I'm happy to speak, but I was, I was unaware that I was going to be called in tonight. It's up to you if you'd like to give us some, you know, some of the experiences you, you've had or, you know, um, things you've collected. You, you're more than welcome. If not, that's fine as well. Well, I'll just say quickly that I um, I hear what everybody is saying, and my feeling, frankly, is if, and I understand that you know people have to work, people have to make a living. However, I have to believe that on some level, if your job and your business is relying on uh, something like constant speculation and harassment being upheld so that you can continue to work, I have to believe that it's not something that is legitimate, frankly. If people are saying, if the community members are coming out at 7.30 p.m. to talk about constant harassment, phone calls, texts, emails to their homes, to their works, and something like this would mitigate that so that they can continue to live with dignity rather than constant harassment, I think something needs to be done about this. I think people need to feel comfortable in their homes. We're talking about stripping people of generational wealth, stripping families of their ability to, to keep their kids and their communities the way that they want. They don't want to sell their homes. They, ha they have every right to call up a real estate agent if they want to sell their homes. They know who to call. This is just opting in for folks so that they can mitigate some of the constant harassment that they're experiencing. Nobody should have to live their lives taking out the trash and somebody comes and walks up to them and asks them if they want to sell their homes. I mean, this is harassment. It's plain harassment. Um, so that that's that's how I feel. You know, I understand I'm, I'm very sympathetic to real estate agents who have to make a living, but I have to believe that if your work is relying on upholding a community that allows harassment to take place, that it's illegitimate, that it, that it isn't right, that you can't have a system like this in place um, so that you can continue to do your work. There are other ways, I believe, to conduct business that doesn't allow this sort of malpractice to continue, frankly. Um, so thank you for allowing me to speak and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, next is Annette Fisher. Annette, your your mic is unmuted. Oh. Annette. I'm trying to unmute. There you go. Am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear can you, you now. Hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Um to this I think that people are feeling when they probably are being harassed how uh, seniors multi certifications seniors and, and I think that if we these people in a situation where uh, people are going to knock on doors basic uh, if there's a cease 
only the investors. This will do multiple things to contrary to what the consumers might think, oh, I'm going to get myself an investor because they'll pay me a lot of money. Investors are in the business to make money. And even if you put this $1,000 fine on an investor and say seasons desist for them as well, the reality is they don't care about $1,000. That's chump change for them, okay? They're looking to get houses. I talk to investors all the time. Every time they approach on a house, they're looking to offer, you know, off of whatever that is truly worth. So they're looking to make money. So what it's going to do then is bring down the value. And we talk about bring down the those homes because home value is the neighbor sold their house. And a lot of people are older and many of these people in these homes because they've been there for generations are older. They don't know how to line to go and find themselves a real estate with a higher credential. Um, so I really feel that it is hurt these names, not help them. Just look at what's going in the real estate market in general. We've got a big boy out there who came in to supposedly sell data for real estate agents and get us, you know, more listings, what have you. And now what are they doing? Just look at the rest of the country. They're not so much doing it here yet. And I'm not going to say their name. You all can go. F They're looking to buy. They can buy those homes and turn around and then resell those homes to make a profit. They're obviously not offering what those houses should have been bought for. So I think it's going to do a disservice. I also happen to work in the mortgage business as a mortgage loan. It's like a red service to these people I need to now exclude them from whatever that what we should do is enforce rules like the do not call list. And if someone wants to be on a list where people can't come and knock on their door, they should be able to sign up for that and then impose fines in that matter. But to say that we want to have whole neighborhoods not have the ability of having people reach out to them, um, I think we're doing a disservice to these people. And realtors are in the business to get more money for a homeowner. Their pay is based on a commission. I can't tell you that they all do the right thing. I've talked to some people who are very unscrupulous. Um, but I don't see how any of this is going to really, I mean, I understand where people are coming from and people shouldn't be harassed, but I don't see how this truly helps many of the homeowners. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Uh... I will try um, Kathy Mercado again. Kathy? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, yes. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kathy Mercado, and I am a tenant advocate um, for Citizen Disease, also for Trust Land, and I've been in this community for East New York for more than 20 years. I grew up here, and I absolutely advocate for our community. Um, we need to stop this solicitors to stop um, harassing our community, trying to um, buy our land to um, try to take us out of our community. We are a community that we're going to be together and we have to stick together and we need um, all these um, solicitors, um, these investors to stop, stop harassing our community and our um, elderly people. We need to live in a place where we don't have all these people um, call, um, sending us letters, um, 
every day making phone calls and standing in front of our houses um, making offers. So um, I do um, have to say that um, we have a great community, Cypress Hills, and we all been um, advocating for our community. And East New York is not for sale. And I, Brooklyn, it's very big and it's a beautiful community. So we all have to stick together. Thank you for your time. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have three people who are calling. Um, I don't have their names, but I will start with um, the phone number starts 917-682. If you could, um, once I unmute your line, please state your name. You are on. Hello, my name is Linda. Oh, thank you. My name is uh, Linda Singleton. Singleton. You, thank you for allowing me. To, can you hear me? Say, did, I'm sorry. Did you say what was your name again? Linda Singleton. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank me. Thank you for allowing me to uh, participate in, in in this survey. Um, I am a long life. Uh, resident and homeowner in East New York. I appeal to you to consider expansion of the current cease and desist zone that is already in place to all of East New York as well as all of Brooklyn. As a lifelong resident here in East New York, this is the most frightening time that I can recall. Few were never interested in migrating into my, my uh, community until after uh, Manhattan exploded and threw a lot of people out over there and a wave started happening, crossed the bridge to Fort Greene, Bethel Stuyvesant, and then they started creeping into the community that they wouldn't even drive through. So uh, we have been successful with the grassroots organizations that has been working in the community um, that I choose to get involved with them because I felt as if that uh, it was unfair. I did not want to see Brooklyn become like some parts of Bethel Stuyvesant in Fort Greene, unaffordable, people being displaced. That was, you know, and we were, we we're going to be just like them if we don't try to do something. We're, at, we're on the borderline of the water. There's nowhere else for us to go, pushing us out of the state altogether. So. Um, I, I feel as if that um, the behavior of the developers had, they, they began then, but then when the pandemic, this 100 year pandemic, something that most of us would not have lived to see, but we happen to be here at this time that has doubled down on the, the problem of what we are living through now. And the, the developers are, they are taking up an advantage of this time at, for when people who lost lives, family members who might have been in possession of homes that has to be passed on to people who may not necessarily know how to manage these things. They needed some help. They were not given a chance to to adjust to this 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 pandemic thing that we're going through. And because of that alone, I feel as if that our our state, my government. My, my political people should be protecting their um, citizens here uh, to, to, to be, so that we can be able to uh, preserve what we've always had here in this community. Um, so in the, the, and we, and it obviously was a problem because the Coalition for Community Advancement, they have already establish a zone that was approved by the political policy makers. So there had to be a good reason for you to give it to us one time. So now that, and that's supposed to be a five year moratorium before the pandemic hit. And then with the pandemic, I think it should be expended, extended to 10 years. And it should be not that we have to opt people in, it should be automatically opt People should be up into it automatically, and if they don't want to be in, let them opt out. 
But the bill, this bill is, is needed to ensure fair and level playing ground to long-standing people who has always stayed here and provided affordable rentals and generational wealth in the community. The industry is, uh, is, is processing for greed at the wrong time, flipping high, raising property taxes, creating unaffordable home sales and rentals, let alone how they're actually going to affect the seniors, the retirees, or other fixed income people, and creating even more homelessness in our community, which is something that they never was able to seem to come to terms with the, the people who was homeless in our neighborhood. And this is not going to make it any better. I feel it's your responsibility, our political policymakers, to protect your constituency citizens during this devastating time of all of our lives. Don't be a part of the predatory action. Be a crusader for the people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is the phone number starts 718-342. Um, if you could put, state your name. Yes, hello, my name is Ruth Cherubin. Um, I tried calling earlier, but um, I had problems, but I'm back. <laughs> okay. um, uh, I'd, I'd like to thank everybody for holding this um, very important hearing because um, we're in the middle of a crisis. Um, I'm from East Flatbush. Um, my father, Radul Cherubin, he just died of COVID um, in December. And up until the last four to five years of his life, he was bombarded by constant leaflets, mailings, phone calls. It was just, you know, it was just out of control. And if, if my, my uh, camera feed had worked, I would have shown you a stack of a thick folder of nothing but solicitations. And it, it was just, it was so like, it was, it, it was, you know, it was horrifying because it was like, you know, when you're in the last years of life, you, you should be allowed to just, you know, just, just go off and just, you know, you shouldn't be a, a, a predator, you know, preyed on by people who are constantly bothering you. And, you know, will you sell your house? Will you sell your house? Will you sell your house? And I, you know, I, um, I've been listening to, you know, everyone's viewpoints, and what's frustrating to me is um, there, there have been a lot of bad faith arguments tonight. Um, one of the first bad faith arguments is, well, you know, there's some um, solicitation, but it's not that bad. I can tell you as uh, a daughter who saw my father, my, my mother and my father go through this, that it has gotten out of control within the, I'd say within the four, f f the, the past four years, a constant barrage of solicitations and harassments, phone calls, in many cases, they're not even polite about it. They'll just call you up on your line, landline. They're like, hello, are you selling your house? And they'll click. And they just, you know, it's like it's like they, they don't even have enough respect for the elderly people or homeowners who they're trying to, you know, b purchase property from. To even give them the courtesy of saying, you know, okay, thank you for your time. It's like it, it's just a, a, a uh, it's just out of control. And um, it's it's um, this solici this solicitation also is happening on multiple fronts. Um, like besides just harassing people with constant mailings and stuff, there have been a flood of posters, placards, billboards on every corner. Of, I'd say within a two-mile radius. I live in East Flatbush, bordering Canarsie and Brownsville. A two-mile radius on every lamppost, every uh, telephone post, we buy houses cash. We buy houses cash. Want to cash out, you know. Um, also, um, placards of um, that are encouraging avarice within the community. Like, it's bad enough that we have outsiders coming into our community trying to encourage people to cash out. We also have people telling, you know, uh, putting up uh, posters that say stuff like, hey, we can teach you how to flip houses. We can teach you. So it's not even, it's, it's like, I'm, it's like uh, people uh, are being attacked on multiple fronts. It's, it's the leaflets. It's the, it's the phone calls. It's the placards. It's you know fear of missing out, and um, something something has to be done about this. 
it's 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 uh I'm I'm sorry I'm getting I'm getting emotional. It's just that, you know, um what's happening now is that because black communities and minority communities have traditionally have had their houses undervalued by a lot, people predators within, you know, in uh, speculators, hedge funds are now coming into these communities to just, you know, like eat like pigs at a trough. Like, wow, look at how low these 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 houses are, 200, 300,000. We could just flip it for a million. And it it's it's killing off they they're, they're not even doing anything with these properties. They're just buying them up, tearing them down, putting up luxury developments so that every time a house gets flipped, it it, it gets priced out of uh, 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 the working class, the middle class, it gets turned into a luxury development. It, it you, you know, it, it's 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 uh, it's it's caused a, a, a we're losing affordable housing. We're losing enclaves for the working class or the middle class. It's just a horrible situation where we're we're becoming like uh, Dubaiified. <laughs> you know, we're turning into. It's like New York has become du- Dubai 2.0. Let's just destroy all the working class enclaves, all the middle class enclaves. Let's just tear it all down, turn it into a new, another Dubai, and you know nobody will be able to live here except the you know the 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 one percent of the the oligarchy. So this this um this order, I think you know it, I've heard people say, well, it's going to affect you know uh, you know we have good actors, we have bad actors. It's going to affect the good actors. This is not meant to punish people who are doing the right thing. If you're just putting out a mailer once in a while to, you know, that's fine, but this is not attacking you. If you're you're one of the good guys, you're okay. This is attacking the people who are just so over the top with their, you know, they they just won't leave, you know, there's an elderly person, they're 89, 90, you know, and they're just being harassed day and night. They you know, they won't be left alone. They're te- they're saying, "No, I don't want to sell my house." They keep sending out stuff, they keep harassing putting all this pressure it's about attacking them and you know it's like please if you're part of the industry you're one of the good guys don't feel offended it's not about you it's it's a, it's about this new class of real estate speculators who are just they have no sense of scruples or humanity they just see houses as a commodity to be flipped and and speculated and gambled on like bitcoin or crypto you know it's, it's the new it's this new attitude it's not affecting you it's affecting them so that's all i'm I'm sorry i rambled a bit um but that's all i wanted to say and um thank you for hearing me out thank you ruth and please make sure um if you have copies of mailings you've received if you could get them to us that would be helpful um our last person is a call in their number is uh, starts with five one six two zero five, and you're unmuted. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. Can you please state your name? My name is Bobby Coda. Okay. Thank you. And would you like to testify? Yes. Okay. You can start. Hello. Hello. Yes, Bobby. Yes, yes, yes. I can. T- oh, okay. Very nice. So, um, wow. I'm actually surprised. I was actually mostly listening, but it's to be able to speak. Um, I find this whole thing very this whole concept not allowing people who are in distress have an opportunity for people to call them or send them even a letter um, to give them an opportunity to sell their home at top dollar. You have to remember homes belong to people. 
And we want all sellers to get the most they can get. Why would we want to limit someone's potential to get as much as they can for their property? By not allowing people to contact these homeowners, we're telling those sellers that, hey, you're missing out potential opportunities for someone to contact you. It's not a good idea, in my opinion. Um, people have, I mean, we have so much spam call, spam phone calls as is going out. Now you're saying that only these people are going to get in trouble? It's kind of a strange concept. Um, opinion. Um, as far as communities changing, it's true, communities are changing. And what we need to remember is why are they changing? They're changing because typically they're in distress. And so to them, they need to be renovated or whatever the case is. But I mean, that's, that's not here nor there. People are gonna get upset saying that gentrification is evil or whatever. I mean, I'm not even against that, but I just think the concept of telling someone they can't make a phone call or they can't receive a phone call to help them get you know, out of their distress situation, I think it's a bad idea. Um, but I, I was honestly just here to listen. I didn't mean to really chime in. Okay. So um, thank you, and uh, I guess have a good night. Thank you. You as well. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for this um, public hearing. Um, everybody who is on our list has testified. Um, once again, I would like to remind everyone to submit um, a questionnaire, which can be found on our website. Um, also, if you have evidence that you would like to submit to us, you can email it to Brooklyn Cease and Desist at dos.ny.gov or mail it to the Department of State, 123 William Street, 20th floor, New York, New York, 10038, Attention, Office of General Counsel. Once again, thank you for attending. Have a good night.